My name is Bob Lindsay and I'm running for Los Angeles County Sheriff. Today I'm here with uh, Bill Skiles. And I have no clue where this conversation is going to go, but I will tell you this, that uh, both of us have something in common. We're both retired from law enforcement. And I'll tell you what, that's a badge of honor for both of us and for all of you that are out there on the streets right now, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, I swear to God. So with that said, what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to Bill a little bit about his position on CCW. And I know that we've talked, and I just met Bill today, by the way, and uh, he's been in a couple of shootings when he was on the force. And so I know he, he knows how to handle critical incidents. I know he knows what it's like when it's a panic situation, but you can't panic. And so what I'd like to do, Bill, is I'd just like to ask you, what are your thoughts about CCW? What are your thoughts about response times? I, I know you know as well as I do that the police can't always be there. And when they're not there, the citizens out in the public are looking for some sort of answer. What should we do? What are your thoughts? You know, I working some really tough areas in, the, in Los Angeles uh, where I grew up. Um, I just saw too many victims um, and we were there after the fact. In fact, if you look at our time in law enforcement, we receive a radio call and we respond to that situation. That means the situation is already, it is either happening or it has happened. So by the time we're there, the best that we can do is, if required, get an ambulance out there and then put out a crime broadcast. But the crime has already occurred. Yeah, that's um, very true. You know, we were taught uh, back then when I, when I came on the job is that, you know, make sure you tell these residents don't take the law into their own hands. You know, I remember give, that. give them the answer, let us, this is what we get paid for, let the police do their job. But I got to tell you, uh, you know, and I know this, we saw too many people that died, too many people that were seriously injured, too many times where we followed a victim in an ambulance to take a crime report, and that was the best we could do to get that crime broadcast out there. I would go and interview these folks in their own homes where they were a victim in their own homes, they were a victim going to the, around the corner to the store. Um, and I would ask them, do you have a gun? Do you have a firearm that you can use to defend yourselves? And sometimes I would get the answer, no. And for the life of me, I couldn't. I finally got to a point after seeing too much of this where I would tell people, go and get a firearm. Learn how to use it. Know, understand when you should use it. Understand that if you point that weapon at someone, doesn't mean you have to use it if you can get them to stop what they're doing. That became my message to people. Good law-abiding citizens. As you know, we talked earlier, I have been shot. Uh, this was a person that was an ex-con out of prison. Um, he was now back with his gang on the street and involved in drug trafficking again. Uh, it was a simple traffic stop. I'm training a brand new officer out of the academy. And that quickly, the fight was on, and the next thing, we were fighting for our lives. Um, I know how quick this can happen, that just a simple trip to the store. In fact, I'll tell you, we were on our way just to get a cup of coffee on morning watch, mm. just to stay awake, you know, make sure we stayed sharp. And we still wound up in a, a, a really violent fight with a guy that was out of prison, uh, and this guy was able to fight. You know, strong, lifting weights in prison. Uh, you, you, you know the Absolutely, drill. we've seen them. We, see, we used to watch as we, we learned that they would practice taking out police officers. We also knew that a lot of times the victims, if there is no victim, there's no one to testify in court. 
you don't know what these folks are going to, these violent criminals are going to do anymore. You just don't know. You know, Bill has stories, I'm sure, that he could, he could talk about probably for days. Um, you know, working LAPD and I could do the same having worked for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department for 33 years. But it's not our stories that are really important, it's your stories. And when you walk down the street, trust me, criminals see you as a target even more so than they would see Bill or myself. They know we're carrying guns, they know we have a badge, and they know we have a lot of backup. But when they see you on the streets, they know you don't have a gun. They know you don't have any backup, and that's what makes you an easy victim. You know, there's self-defense classes, and there are other ways that you can go out and learn how to protect yourself. But the best way to protect yourself and your family is to go ahead, get yourself trained, get yourself to understand how to use a weapon. You don't have to use it ever. In my career, I got shot at twice. One time, when we were getting shot at, it was a rifle. What did I do? I leaned over to my partner, stepped on the gas pedal, we went over a curb, we twisted the car and went through a bush. Why? Because I didn't want to die. Now that particular individual got arrested. The SWAT team came and he was contained. The next time I was shot at, it was a drive-by shooting. It was an initiation. I just happened to be around the corner from the drive-by shooting. I had a ride along with me and we had just arrested a burglar. So there was myself and three other people in the car. This individual comes around the corner and shoots at us. We ended up chasing him and he crashed down near the Harbor Freeway. And at that point we took him into custody. But I'm telling you these simple stories because if they're willing to do that to us, then you need to understand as crime rises in Los Angeles County, as suspects and criminals realize that crime now pays. Because if you're sentenced to a year in jail, you only do 10 days. If you're sentenced to six months or less, you only go in for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. That's not okay anymore. But all of us need to realize if we don't protect ourselves, there's not enough police officers out there to do it anymore. So with that, Bill, first of all, I want to thank you not only for your law enforcement service, but you were in the military. <laughs> and yeah. modest and humble. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you know, my, probably the happiest people to see me go in the service were my mom and dad. I know that sounds, <laughs> that sounds no, a little... And I think I'm going to understand why. I grew up in <laughs> South Central LA, um, and like a, lot of the, like a lot of us, you know, I, I wound up getting into some trouble. Um, I got kicked out of a few high schools, and uh, my mom and dad have always been very law-abiding um, and very respectful of law enforcement and the authorities. Um, I just realized deep down inside that if I didn't do something, uh, I knew where my life was going and it wasn't going to be good. And at that point, I made the decision to join the, the United States Army. Um, so I'm in basic at Fort Ord. I get my GED while I'm in basic training. I had to get that to go to Fort Gordon, Georgia and, and go through the Military Police Academy. Wow. Right out of there, 75% of our company was taken over uh, and shipped to the Republic of Vietnam, mm -hmm. uh, where I served with the 18th Military Police Brigade, which happens to be the most decorated military police brigade in the history of the United States Army. Oh my God. Very proud awesome. of my service with yes. them. Well, with that, I can tell you this is this is my hero because we get to sit here today to talk about the things we're talking about, about the Constitution and about the things that matter to us here in the United States. And we wouldn't have that without sacrifice, without the things that you do. And I'm going to tell you right now, 
The military does make a difference. The military does serve as an organized place for people not only to get their lives together, but to defend the United States of America. And one of my promises to all of you out in the military is this. When you come back, I hope you apply for the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department because it's a perfect place for you to have a career after the career that you have there. I look forward to you doing that because I know that the training you receive and the heart that you have for this country is the most important thing that we're looking for. So Bill, I could sit here and talk to you all night, but I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart, not only for your service, but for your military service. And God bless you. God bless you. Brother. God bless you. My name is Bob Lindsay. Let's take the politics and the politicians out of law enforcement.